Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to do some transformations on square root functions. So I have a previous video on how to transform linear functions, I'll link that in the cards right now. And essentially these transformations that we're looking at are the exact same transformations we saw with linear functions. We've also seen them with exponential functions and quadratic functions. And so knowing what these transformations look like in the equation can be super helpful no matter, no matter what type of function we're trying to graph. So let's review them. We have horizontal translation, so that's here in white. So what we notice here is we have addition and subtraction. So this first one is f of x equals the square root of x minus four. So this minus four in, inside or under the radical is gonna tell us to shift or slide right four units, okay? The next one is square root of x plus two. This will tell us to shift or slide left two units. So for horizontal translation, it's kind of opposite of what it looks like. So if it says minus four, really we're going right four. And if it says plus two, we are going left two. With vertical translation, they are what they look like. So for this one, f of x equals the square root of x minus eight, we would just translate down eight units. And for plus seven here, we would go up seven units. So all of these are transformations of our parent function. So with a square root function, that is f of x or y equals the square root of x. So if you wanna look at how to graph some of those just parent functions, then we can look at the card in the top right hand corner right now. Next, we have a reflection. So remember, a reflection involves a negative sign. So here, when we have a reflection inside with our x, we are going to reflect over the y axis. And for the negative being on the outside, we are going to reflect over the x axis. Okay. And horizontal stretch and shrink. So for horizontal, it's happening inside with x. So for this one, horizontal is, is very similar to horizontal translation, and then it's kind of opposite of what it looks like. So this would be a horizontal shrink by a factor of one third. And for this one, it would actually be a horizontal stretch by a factor of four, okay? All right, and the last one down here, vertical stretch and vertical shrink, this is what it looks like. So here we would have a vertical stretch by a factor of four. And this one would be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half, okay? So those are our transformations. That's what they look like in the equation. So we're gonna look at a couple examples here, one where we just do a couple transformations and one where we do a bunch of transformations. So let's look at these examples. Example number one it says graph g of x equals negative square root of x plus two and compare it to our parent function. So for our parent function, let's graph that real quick. Remember, we would like to choose values that we can take the square root of, um, or in other words, perfect squares. So I'm gonna use zero, one, four, and nine, because when I take the square root of zero, I get zero, square root of one is one, square root of four is two, and the square root of nine is three. So I can go ahead and plot these points. So zero, zero, one, one, four, two, and nine, three. Okay, so there's my, my parent function. Now, let's make that a little better. There we go. Okay. Now, we'll change up our color here, and <clears throat> let's graph the function that we have um, for g. So, negative square root of x plus 2. So, this negative right here is going to have us reflect over the x-axis, and then we're going to, that plus 2, we're going to add 2, so we're going to move up 2. Okay. So, we can still use our same x values here, 0, 1, 4, and 9 because we're still um, taking the square root of those. But now we're gonna make them opposite and then we're gonna add two. So we can do this by building a table of values and then graphing these points, or we can graph them, um, or just move our points that we've already graphed according to the transformation. So we could go ahead and reflect these, and then we could bump them up to units. So I'll do the table first, and then we'll kind of talk through what it would look like just to move the points. And then on the next example, we'll just move our points without having to make a table. All right, so the square root of zero is zero. Opposite of zero, zero, zero plus two is two. Square root of one is one. Opposite of one is negative one. Negative one plus two would be positive one. Square root of four is two. Opposite of two is negative two. Negative two plus two would be zero. Square root of nine is three. Opposite of three is negative three. Negative three plus two would be negative one. Okay, so now we can graph these points. So zero, two, 1, 1, 4, 0, and 9, negative 1. Okay, so now when we graph this, here's our shape for our graph. 
And that's what g of x would look like. So now let's talk about what happened for us to get us there. So this negative here was our reflection. So we took our purple or our parent function here and we reflected it over the x-axis. So that means this point's gonna stay there. This point would move here. Four, two would move here. And nine, three would move right here. Okay, so the purple function or the purple graph would turn into this green graph when we reflected it. And then we're gonna take these four points here and move them up two units. And that would give us, get us to the blue function. Okay, so one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Okay, and so that's how we would do it without having to make a table of values. And now let's take a look at that on our last example. So now we have g of x equals negative one half times the square root of x plus one and then minus three. So we wanna describe the transformations from the parent function to g of x and then graph g of x. So let's start off with our parent function and let's do it in green here. So zero, zero, one, one, four, two, and nine, three. Okay, so there's our parent function. Make that a little better. All right. And now <clears throat> let's think about our transformations. So the first thing we have here is this plus one. Okay, so we are going to translate, change up the color there, it's kind of hard to see. We are going to translate, let's go with this green color here. Translate one unit left, okay? So on our graph here, we're gonna move all of these points one unit to the left. So one, 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 and one. Okay, so now in this lime green color, that is our transformed function after we have shifted one unit to the right, okay? So now the second thing we're going to do is we have this one half right here. So we are going to vertically shrink by a factor of one half, okay? So now this, this lime green graph, all these points we're going to basically multiply their y coordinate by one half. So this point is gonna stay here because its y coordinate is zero. This point has a y coordinate of one, so it's gonna move down to one half. This one has a y coordinate of two, so it's gonna move down to one. And this one has a y coordinate of three, so it's gonna move to one and a half. Okay, so now we've vertically shrunk our green graph, or our green function now to be the one we have in blue. Okay, so now in black, we have this negative right here. So this means we are going to reflect over the x axis. So now our blue graph, we're going to move all those points. We're going to reflect them over the x-axis. So this point is going to stay here. Our point at 0, 1 half would be 0, negative 1 half. 1, well, now let's go over here. 3, 1 would be 3, negative 1. And 8, 1 and a half would be 8, negative 1 and a half. Okay, so now we are down here. And the last thing that we need to do, let's go with maybe this other green color. Um, last thing we need to do is this minus three. So this means we are going to translate three units down, and then we're gonna be done. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And here is our final graph. Okay, so our final graph would be right here, and we would be done, okay? All right, and that's how we graph transformations of square root functions.